electronic music. It was the first time that I ever discovered like an emotion that was captured that I could compare to classical music and it was something different, it was something exciting. My mind was just blown, I couldn't even really comprehend the sounds that I was hearing, but I loved it. And the next week I went to my first rave immediately and then I never looked back. <laughs> I got into DJing when I was about 18 years old. I had just moved out of my house and I moved in with a bunch of my friends who were all DJs. I was a promoter at the time, throwing parties, but we would have house parties all the time and they would all DJ. And eventually I kind of got sick of hearing all of their music and they would never play any of the songs that I wanted to hear. So I started practicing so that way I could play during our house parties. And from there it kind of just escalated, I started playing shows, like local shows in Phoenix. So yeah, I kind of just took off from there. I do a lot of field recordings, and then I try to make little loops out of it. And this is something I sort of started looping with all based on my field recording. Without forgetting everything. This is me talking to myself into my field recorder. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a little piano loop. You already can't leave. So you already can't leave. So we'll just take the piano here and let's make it a little bit more ethereal. Being a DJ first, I think, made it hard to figure out what my sound was because I have a very eclectic taste in music. Luckily, I kind of play that to my advantage a little bit by making so many different types of tracks in the beginning, playing so many different types of sets. And after a few years, it did start to evolve and everything kind of made sense as to what I want to be making, what I want to be playing. I love cinematic, really ethereal sounds. So I tend to kind of just record out a lot of different ethereal sounds using sound sounds that I have, and then also just picking up random pieces of other things like that you could plug into it. When you're learning how to produce music, there's such a long gray period that you have to work through that's incredibly frustrating before you start like the light bulbs start to go off. And once those light bulbs do go off, you can actually start to make things that you like. And then that's when it gets fun, but that gray area. <laughs> I think my biggest mistake was downloading a bunch of VST plugins, not even knowing really how to use the DAW. So it was like almost overload. And then I followed advice from a friend. He's like, get rid of all of your plugins, learn how to use things in stock Ableton so that way you actually know how everything works and then start building your collection again. One of my favorite plugins that I use specifically on this pack a lot is Paul Stretch, uh, which if you don't know is a really old program uh, that wasn't internal at all, uh, but it basically takes a sample and it stretches it out to like infinity times as long and then you can automate the different parameters inside of it. That's my favorite part is actually just using it to make really crazy Ethereal in this pack, I think people could expect to get something a little bit out of the ordinary. A lot of ambience, a lot of found sounds, a little bit of artificial intelligence. Yeah, just a lot of lo-fi beats and random loops that I've made. I use a lot of uh, live instruments as well, so I record a lot of bass, but I feel like generally when it comes to the electronic side, I'm trying to make the weirdest sounds. I'm trying to take sounds that aren't necessarily uh, synthesizers, like musical instruments, and trying to create music out of them, uh, which is always kind of fun. I constantly feel like I just learned how to produce yesterday, so I don't think that feeling ever entirely goes away. It becomes easier, but the more you do it, the more you learn, and each day you become better than the day before. So like I said, I learned how to produce yesterday. Well, I've been saying that for like the past three years. So I don't think that feeling ever ends.